That's the other thing with having the diagnosis. I don't feel like I have bipolar. I just feel like Sam. Mm -hmm. I was worried I would feel like I am bipolar Sam and this is this thing I have to wear. But I still see the world exactly from my viewpoint. But I also have like another lens to look at any situation through like the diagnostic lens of bipolar to make a safe decision. So I now have a collaboration. So like I might be painting and it'll get to like midnight and I'm like, I should do six more paintings and like build a cube around my head. And then you could spin it. It'd be like a dream machine for people. And then I'm like, I should do that while I'm dreaming. So I should do that from midnight to midday. And I've just thought of it and I'll be like, just go. And then I would used to do that. And then now I just, just step over here and I, and I look at that situation. I go, oh, Samuel. And I'll be like, yes. I'd be like, and this is great, but do that tomorrow. What about now you go to sleep? And I'll be like, oh, okay. And then I just dodge those bullets. I, I love Vincent van Gogh. A lot of art historians believe that he had five different types of mental illnesses and they also think that he was the greatest artist. Some people think this. And I think there's a correlation. I think he is the best artist because he had the most mental illnesses. So I'm really looking into how to get more. And, um... and this is what I do now. I have solo art exhibitions and a stand-up comedy show that I pair together to talk about my experience. And the reason I do that is because I think some people are visual learners and some people learn verbally. And so I feel like by combining the mediums together, it, it allows me to be more specific when explaining things about like the more ineffable states of um, emotions and mental illness and specifically bipolar. And so for the exhibition, I'll just give an example. I have these two paintings uh, next to each other and they're about two and a half meters. Um, so it took up the whole wall. And um, I won't, what they really are is a relationship between anxiety and avoidance. So the idea being that these are all the thoughts you have. Say you have a goal, which is getting there. These are all the thoughts you have on how to get there, all the different possible plans you might have. And then if you're very single-minded, there's things that you should do, your to-do list, that you start to hang in the sky to do later. But then you start getting anxious because you're now holding so many things in parallel inside your mind. And then when you look up at your to-do list, it's just hanging over you. And it builds up and it builds up until your mind looks like this. You're inescapable. And then eventually it explodes. And then this is the apocalyptic uh, version when anxiety implodes on avoidance. And instead of saying any of that in the description, I just wrote, where's Wally? And... Um, <laughs> And I watched a man stand there for four hours. Well, the comedy serves the goals of and sh sharing myself. Because I know that some things are difficult and, uh, you, you know, they can be triggering and you're essentially talking about mental illness for 60 minutes mm -hmm. and showing paintings around that. And so I feel like now my comedy has a job of making this as playful as possible. Every day or two, I would flip my sleep cycle by 12 hours, just back and forth. And then so when I was awake, my brain would think it was dreaming and I could close my eyes and I would get visions, which I can then open my eyes and it would project onto a canvas and I would quickly paint that. And then when I was asleep, my mind would never shut off and so I was able to lucid dream every single night. And so what I started to do was just document what I saw in my mind. I was just like, I'll just paint completely from that. I don't need reality, I'm letting it go. Now, obviously this is a very fast way to bring on psychosis, but um, <laughs> before the fall, it was amazing because Picasso changed his style of art nine times in 90 years. And in two weeks, I moved into cubism. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's... It's almost like the, the medium. If you just keep things funny, then it's almost like the subtext of what you say can be informative and provide insight.